And they're starting to join. Let me see if I can. No. Okay. All right, we'll give it a few more minutes to let people join. If you're just joining us, we're just hanging on for everybody to join the webinar. And Cecilia, can you hear me? Yes. If I'm causing a problem, I can log off of this account and log on to my personal account. No worries, you just hang right in there. All right. Hi, this is Kieran. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Kieran. Oh, hi, Kieran's here too. That's we can enough. see you too, Kieran. We just can so you see know. you, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn my video off. Okay. And yeah, everyone else can hear you too, Karen. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, we are recording and we are sharing. So I'm just gonna get started. It's, um, it's right at 6.02 now. We do still have some people who are still joining. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everyone who is taking the time today to join, uh, and especially our esteemed presenter, Nick Olson, who is with Predict Wind, one of our biggest sponsors. Uh, this is our second webinar in a series with Predict Wind. We've also got Karen from Predict Wind who's on so that she can answer any questions that people have throughout this webinar. And uh, my name is Cecilia Dahl, and I'm a volunteer with Seven Seas Cruising Association, and I'm here to host this webinar today. Just really quickly, a little bit about Seven Seas Cruising Association. Uh, we are uh, a, an association of cruisers that's been around since 1952, fostering camaraderie, knowledge, and information sharing. Uh, and this webinar is part of our series um, generously provided by Predict Wind. We also provide a number of other educational workshops, and I want to highlight specifically starting on August 27th, we have a series for our cruising station hosts. For those of you who are members of SSCA, you'll know that we have over 150 cruising station hosts around the world. So if you're out there cruising and you come into a port, we typically have someone there who can help you, whether it's with um, sourcing repair, getting groceries, filling propane, anything you might need um, in any of those ports. And that's one of the major benefits of Seven Seas Cruising Association. So August 27th will be the first of those. Watch our website and our Facebook page for more information. So with that, uh, today our focus is on the amazing app Predict Wind, it's really truly a leader and a game changer for all sailors. We have Nick Olson joining us again from New Zealand and Karen as well from New Zealand. And Nick is gonna be covering uh, coastal weather routing for us today. So um, I've got, oh, my screen share just stopped. Uh, last thing before I hand off to Nick, if you're interested in more SSCA, we're, uh, we're www.ssca.org. Nick, off to you and predict wind. I'm going to stop my share and turn it on over. Thanks very much. Uh, yep. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming along and, um, and taking the time to, to listen to this today, uh, listen to our presentation today. Um, we keep this pretty... Um, not loose, but 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 we like to actually use the product as we go, and um, and yeah, so do things in, in real time. Um, just a little bit of background on myself. Um, I'm a sailor, so since I was six years old, um, so it's quite a few years now, um, and I do a fair bit of uh, two-handed offshore sailing. So I've got a fair idea of the of uh, using the product in the real world. Um, so and we're very privileged to be joined today by uh, Kieran McMaster, who is the head of the support team at Predict Wind. Uh, Kieran's a former Volvo ocean race sailor, I think she did two, two times, and also does, uh, uh, you know, ha has done and does still do a lot of offshore sailing. So um, yeah, she's very, very, very knowledgeable and, um, and super helpful and she'll be able to answer any uh, questions today. Uh, so I think we'll just get uh, straight into it, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll flick over to a screen share if I can. There we go. Uh, uh, 
And it's per normal, I can't see the one I want to share. It's because I've got, there we go. Just bear with me for a second there. I should be able to. And while Nick's working that out, um, just a note to everybody, you can use at the bottom of your screen, there's a box there for Q&A. If you type your questions in there, Karen will be able to answer as many as possible that way. Um, use the chat for maybe between yourselves, but if you have a specific question, please try to focus on Q&A. There we are. It was there all along. It was just that it was showing me a different screen to what I thought I was going to be sharing. And um, so, yeah. Um, alrighty, so uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll get underway. So uh, when it's in Celia's um, introduction, she mentioned um, that uh, the Predict, Predict Wind app, and so yeah, Predict Wind actually has two main uh, apps. So we have the Predict Wind app, which is what you use when you're um, you know at home or uh, at the dock, and um, and and also the website and that's we'll we'll cover that a little bit today. Uh, we'll have a, we'll do a little bit of stuff on the website, and then we'll flick over to the Predict Wind Offshore app, which is what you use uh, when you're going to go out of Wi-Fi. Essentially, um, you can use it for ocean crossings um, and also coastal coastal routing, and just any time that you're going to go away from internet coverage or Wi-Fi range. So uh, both of those apps. Um, work on a laptop, your 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 home um, your home computer, so PC or Mac, uh, Chromebook, iOS, so your iPhone, your tablet, uh, your iPhone or your iPad, and and also Android, so your Android phone or or tablet. So uh, most 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 things are covered by that, um, and uh, yeah, and probably I'll just. Also talk about the fact that it's just here. There's a little list of sort of what what makes these two two different. Um, and as I said, the Predict Wind app is for when you're in uh, Wi-Fi range, and the offshore app is you can use. You can also use that on normal Wi-Fi connection, um, and you can download uh, stuff before you leave, and have that all available offline. Uh, but the real beauty of it is that it works with satellite connections and SSB connections. Um, so basically, if you can, if you have, if with the SSB, if you can email with attachments, you can use the offshore app. Um, it connects to nearly any satellite connection, so that that, that can actually transfer data. So yeah, pretty cool. Righty ho. So I'm going to flick over. Did my screen just change there? Yep, looks that way. And uh, oh, we are in the Predict Wind Forecast website. And uh, oh, I don't know why that went, did that. And uh, so in here, uh, we, we covered this quite a bit in the in the last uh, webinar that I did. And um, it's, you know, we, we talked about the Predict Wind app and and how you might use that in models and and that sort of thing so we won't go too much into that today because we're here to talk about uh weather routing and coastal weather routing i mean obviously we can use these tools here the the maps the gust maps to have a look at um the situation which is of course what we should should be doing uh before we before we leave and and you know use all these tools here and um and, and map to help us make our decision, you know, look at things like observations to match up with the um, match up with the forecasts and and that sort of thing. Um, but what we really want to look at today is 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 the routing and the weather the weather routing. So the weather routing tool is in uh, in the Predict Wind apps and uh, as in the Predict Wind app and the Predict Wind website, and then also in the Predict Wind Offshore app. So what we want to do here is um, we have our, this is, this is where we would start our route and this is where we'd finish our route. And 
I'd recommend using the the Predict Wind app. Um, you know, when you're to to sort of plan and and planning ahead and looking at at, at when you're going to go, and so you can use weather routing, and you can also use departure planning, uh, which is you know gives you the times that you could you could leave. And um, but before we do any of that, I'm going to go back to the weather routing. Is we need to look at our uh, performance polars for our boat. So if you're using any weather routing tool, you need to make sure that you get your polars, your polars right. So what your polars are is essentially how fast the software assumes your boat is going to go in any given wind speed um, and, and you know wind speed conditions. So we have a, a, a large number of boats in here. Um, this is what we call a, our predefined list. So you might, you know, the, your boat might be in here. It might not be. Um, so let's just let's just choose one. And uh, but if it's if your boat is is in there, sure, you know, great. Uh, select it. There might be a boat in there that you know is really similar to the performance of your boat. So you can you can choose that. Uh, we also have a power polar for for for, for power boaters. Um, and a sail polar, which is a more basic version of the polars, and it, you can just set your your boat speeds in there if you if you if you know that your boat is you know base, goes a pretty similar speed, no matter what. You can do you can use that one, and then if you want to really get stuck into it, these are the polars for the race boat I sail on. You can make your own polars and get that really really accurate um it's yeah if 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 you're into that sort of thing it's a it's a great great thing to do we'll just go back to the predefined polar there i've chosen a sunfast 36. uh there's some other things in here i could turn on a motoring option so that that means that instead of sitting around in no wind um i want to i want to get there and so I'm going to motor at six knots if the wind is less than eight knots. I can change these parameters. I could change that to 10 knots because my boat doesn't sail very well in under 10 knots um, or whatever. So that's a, just an option that I can, I can turn on and off. And then I'll talk about this a bit more later on, but I can actually adjust my polar as well. So I've got, you know, I've got the Sunfast 36 in there, but if I thought that it was a bit, you know, when I when I look at the weather routing results, which we'll come to, if I thought that was a bit fast or a bit slow for what I was doing, I can change these polar percentages uh, to, so that it matches my boat's performance more closely. And that's, uh, you know, I'll probably mention this a few more times, but it's a really, really important thing to, to understand and know. And, and so that the software is reflecting your boat's performance. So, so I've set that all up, and I will, I'll come over here, and um, probably we should have a, a quick look at departure planning, because especially for coastal hopping, you know, hopping up the coast, we might want to look at um, some times that, that different times to leave, and and so that we can, uh, you know, get our departure at a time that that means we're gonna have a nice trip essentially so i can go in here and i can i can change how far apart i want them to the, the departure times to be so let's i'm going to put it 24 hours so that we can look at the next four days and um i'm just gonna run that run that now you can see i've got my time zone for auckland because that's where i am and um, yeah, so when the, so that you'll see this here, it's loading, and you might go, oh, that's really slow. So, but it's it's calculate uh, apparently, according to the the much smarter people than me that developed this, it's doing a billion calculations when it does this, the the, the weather routing or the departure planning. So there's a lot going on. It can take a, a little while to compute all that. Um, that that that. Uh, calculation is done on the predict wind servers and I'll talk about that a bit more when we get into the offshore app. So you can see there we've got all these routes and it's like well, well what do they all mean and what the the real tool here with the departure planning is is actually 
in the tables and it's because it's a summary of each one and we we want to just look at the summary and and see you know how long is the passage going to take you know what's my maximum wind speed my minimum wind speed average wind speed and but this is this is probably what we want to look at for for, for sailing is uh you know for cruising up, up the coast it's time up wind well none <laughs> so in any of them the you know, the, our second time here this is um so there's the 18th the 19th the 20th and the 21st and yeah none of these look bad but you know there might be one that's better than the other um you know we might want to do more reaching uh, depending on what type of boat we have i mean i quite like like you know if i had i quite like the, the these um this departure here could be pretty good you know a, a lot of reaching and a lot of downwind um between the and you know between the different models and uh no no big waves so which is also going to be important for that for that route that we're we're running is um you know is is our wave height uh, because there's a lot of current running along the coast there so anyway so we can we can look at this and choose which time we're going to leave and that can make a huge difference to the your enjoyment of your of your sailing if it's if you get the departure time right so you've got your weather window right then you, you, you could have it's the difference between having a horrible trip where it's bumpy and upwind and you know and nobody's happy compared to you know some beautiful downwind sailing and reaching so a, a, you know a really important tool and um, one worth well you know worth having a good look at so again once we've chosen our departure time we can go to the weather routing and we could change the time that we we were going to depart so i could say oh, I'm gonna, i want to leave on the i liked the look of um the 19th and so i could set my time up here I need to learn not to point with my hands. I could set my time up here that I wanted to leave and I can run my weather routing for that time. And I'm not going to run it because we're actually going to flick over to the um, offshore app because whilst we can do all our routing here, uh, we actually want to run it in the offshore app so that we can take all the information with us. So I'm going to stop sharing that. And I am going to share another screen. There we go. So this is the PredictWind Offshore app. So this is this is what we use when we are going to go out of out of Wi-Fi range, and or if we just just want to save that information. Um, it's a really a really powerful tool, and it does some uh, pretty clever stuff. So we're just giving it a, a, a quick overview today. Just checking my time. I tend to really talk for a long time. So, uh, so yeah, a really, really powerful tool. And um, one that we're going to briefly look at today. So, but we can, we can do all the, or, you know, um, pretty much everything we want to do. So you'll see here, we, we've also got the departure planning tool in here. So I could, I could do that in here, what, what we just did on the Predict Wind app. Um, and but I'm going to stick stick to the weather routing today. And because I've set my polars up in the in the Predict Wind app, and I'm logged into my account in in the offshore app, it knows what my polars are. Um, so when I calculate my weather route, it's going to know that it's me and that I've got my Sunfast 36. And uh, so what we do here essentially is we decide we decide where we're going and um, today I'm gonna go from here and somewhere in Miami which I've never been to so I don't know much about and uh, I'm gonna go up the coast here and so this green this little green one here that's where I want to start my route and so you can see here I ran a, a weather route before when I was getting ready to do this and so we'll just we'll just move it a little bit so that we run a different one so everyone can see what's happening. 
and then I've got my finish point up here, which is my red, my red point. Um, and that's, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. If I was updating this while I was underway, you know, let's say I'm out here and it's, this is, you know, this is 12 hours from now and the, uh, the forecast, all the forecast models have updated and I want to get new weather. I would move my start to where I am, to my start point to where I am. So there's a few ways that I can see where that, um, you know, change that position. And one of them is I could, I could put my lat long in up here, and um, and it would it would it would it would move that green point. So you, if you have a look, if I move that, you'll see the the, the position changing. Uh, another way is if I had an iridium go, uh, it would it would there'd be a little white dot on the screen and I could just move my green start waypoint to, to, to where I was. So it's a really important point that, that you, that you, you know, when you're um, underway, uh, that you're moving your weather routing point to, to where you are and getting new weather and a new, a new route, an updated route based on the latest weather. So I'm actually going to pretend that, that, we, that we, we have sailed a little way and um, maybe I haven't exactly followed the the weather routing because they're all saying a pretty similar thing. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna go to there. And I am going to come over here and I'm gonna click on download. And so you'll see this box here pops up, and I've got all these options here. And so um if I have a Wi-Fi connection or a super fast satellite connection, I could get these high resolution grips. Um, that's what I would get before I left. I would download all of that stuff. Um, the high resolution grips give me more detail and uh, you know finer granularity of the of the weather model. Um, but I'm not going to get them because we're going to pretend like we're on a an Iridium Go connection, which is a you know really excellent uh, cost-effective piece of equipment. And the reason I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I the the file size is too big. But what is really clever about what's happening here is I don't actually need it because the grips are just going to are going to are going to give me an overview. To, for me to look at in relation to the weather routing. The weather routing is the powerful tool here. The weather routing, when I send this request off, once we get to that step, that's gonna send, send, send my position, my start and my end position, and anything else that I've, I've put in there that I wanna get back, it's gonna send that off to the PredictWin servers, and they're gonna do, the predict PredictWin servers are going to do the calculation of my weather route, and then they're going to send this tiny little file size back. So when it does that calculation, it could be calculating between 50 and 100 megabytes of information. Yet I'm going to get that file back. It's only going to be a five kilobyte file size. So that's, you know, that's, that, that, that's what allows it to work the weather routing. To, to work really well and uh, on you know SSB and a, and a standard satellite uh, connection, so I can change these parameters. I can get you know four days or, or whatever, and each time I change that, it changes the file size. So you'll see here that I've got um, the ocean data turned on. So I downloaded the ocean data just before. The beauty of um, the ocean data is it doesn't change too much, you know, that like a atmospheric forecast that can change, you know, we want to get the update that all the time. The ocean data, we've downloaded it while we were um, in, in the marina on our Wi-Fi connection. And that's not going to change for the, for the duration of our trip. Uh, you know, the, 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 the data there will, will still be in the offshore app and, but we don't need to download it again because it would, it, it's, it's, you know, big file size. Observations, we'll, um, we'll get those. They are, yeah, they're not too big. So I can turn that on and off and I can see my estimated file size change. Um, just coming back over here, we're gonna get wind, pressure, rain, wave, gust, cape, and I don't want the cloud. 
anyway, so we've got we've got all that. I'm going to click on next, and then I can here I can I could change my departure time again. I could choose weather routing, departure planning. Uh, up here, I've got a little a little settings box, and this is where I could adjust my polar speed. You see, there I've got that at eighty percent because I'm not pushing the boat hard. I'm just I just want to cruise, so I've got it set at eighty percent. I've also got my motoring turned on. Um, so I'm going to motor because from what I can see, it looks like pretty light winds. So, but I might just drop that down a little bit. So let's go to eight knots. But I've got that turned on. Um, I want the weather routing to take into account the tidal and ocean currents. So I'll just click out of there. I know that I'm uh, probably rattling through a whole lot of stuff that people have never seen before, but we're just trying to give you an example of, 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 how, you'd, of how you'd do this. And um, yeah, there's a lot of, um, we have a lot of tutorials, we have other webinars uh, on this, and we also have um, really helpful, experienced people like Kieran to answer any questions that you have. Um, Righty-ho. So, I'm going to get the GMDSS forecast. That's that's a, a written text forecast. It's a really small file size. I want to get that because that is written by a meteorologist, and I can. It, it's going to give me the heads up of any nasties in the area. You know, is there a, a, a hurricane developing? And the GMDSS will will tell me that. That the meteorologist will will have picked that up. And I'm not sure whether they're showing up on my screen or not. Um, yeah, so that's well worth getting that GMDSS every time. Get that because that's your that's your 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 early warning by a meteorologist. You might there might be stuff in there that you can't see in the grubs. So it's a great a great thing to have. So then I'm going to click on next, and you'll see here that we've got all of our connection types. So I'm on a web connection but I could have the Iridium Go. I could use an optimizer. An optimizer is a relatively inexpensive device, I think about $150, uh, that will allow your sat phone or any other um, high-end satellite connection. That will, it gives you a firewall, but it allows you to connect to your satellite connection from your phone or your iPad or your computer wirelessly. Um, so it gives you the, the same functionality that an Iridium Go comes with, but it, 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 the optimizer works with all sorts of satellite connections. Uh, if you were if you used Global Star, you could you could connect to that. Satellite will also directly connect to your to a, a high end satellite connection, and then email here. So this is for if you're SS, on SSB and you can email with attachments. You could you would create the request here and you would attach that to your email and you would send that email off and then you get another email back with all the information. So I'll go back over here if I can get rid of the Zoom thing that's in my way. Go away. <laughs> go away. I've got the uh, here we are. Click back to web. Um, the Zoom screen thing was in my um, where I wanted to click. Um, so anyhow, I can see um, each file here, how, how big it estimates they're going to be, and then I'm just going to click on download all. So if we were on our Iridium Go connection, it would it would uh, make that connection to the satellite network and beam that information off, and then beam it straight back in. So it's very, very clever how it does that. It, it, it creates a, essentially a, a web connection over the satellite. And, um, you know, it might take, you know, depending on this file size, that could take 15, 20 minutes. But the, the software is very clever. If that connection for some reason dropped during that time, it'll do a mid-file restart. It'll pick up from where it left off and just carry on downloading. So you don't need to sit there watching it. You can go away, make a cup of tea, and um, and and you know come back and all your information will be there. So uh, an important thing to note here is we can see down the side here is the time that all of these grips 
were updated. As you can see, I'm in the future uh, compared to uh, the, the rest of you there in the in the US um, with, with with my dates. But um, it's this is this is really important information. So knowing when the uh, models have updated, then you can so all the models we offer are updated twice a day. And so once they've updated, that's when you want to get new grips and new weather routing so that you can have the latest weather to see whether anything's changed since the last model run. So really important information to know. So I'll just click on close there and you'll see it's taken me straight to the tables. And so I've got a summary, uh, you know, a graphical representation of, of my, um, of my route here. It's, um, yeah, she's, it's a pretty benign looking, uh, looking trip we've got um, coming up. So in the summary here, I can see uh, the wind speeds of my route uh, estimated in the different models. And, um, but what I want to have a look at here, and it's, well, let's go down to the GFS just because it's got a bit more wind. And what I want to look at here is true wind speed and true wind angle and speed over ground. So this is where I can go, hang on a minute, my boat doesn't do, um, you know, doesn't go this fast. Like look out, you know, my, my boat's not this fast. I need to adjust my polars. So you can go back and uh, next time you could, you could run another route, but next time you, um, you do it, you could move the polar percentage down a bit and, and get this, the speed accurate so because this is this is what gives you you know this is you know let's say we're doing a longer trip it, it, it gives you the indication of where you're going to be in relation to the weather system so as i say getting those polars right is is is, is a big deal and so i've got a bunch of other information there i'll just move this and i can i can go through and have a look at the, the wave heights, the current, and you can see that we have a lot of current, and we'll we'll touch on we'll touch on this because obviously we've got the the Gulf Stream roaring through there. Um, but we can we can look at that visually in a minute. But good good to know, especially for this trip that we're doing up the coast here, we want to be able to look at the current and make sure that we essentially want the wind and the current together. We do not want uh, the wind against the current. So what I could do here is I could actually select the route and I could export it. So I could, um, if I was doing this on my iPad, for example, I could select that route and I could export it into a piece of, you know, into a navigation tool that I had on there. Or I could um, just grab a couple of uh, waypoints from my route and, and chuck them into my chart plotter. So but before I did that, I would want to analyze my route. So you can see here, we, we've, you know, we, we knew from, um, from our summary uh, that it was, well, the departure planning let us know that it was going to be pretty mild. And the weather routing is also letting us know that it was uh, a pretty mild trip. So if I just animate this, and we'll see, you see all the boats are, are running along, and then I'll stop it there. And you see all the boats are running along these little little routes. And um, you might be asking, well, what does this mean? So each of these colors is representative of a different weather model. So we're, we're down here, we've got, we were looking at the predict wind, um, the PWG. And so that's, that's the, the blue route. And that is, that's also the weather model that is displaying behind us here on the map and I could change that over I could go to ECMWF and I can see the different you know the, the, the things happening in the different models and it's you know probably not the best example that we have because uh, you know because we, 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 it's pretty light but it is you know the models are choosing some different things I mean I think that the yeah these these three, the the PWE, the PWG, and the ECMWF, they all 
are doing a pretty similar thing. Uh, the ECMWF, for some reason, it wants to go along the coast here. Um, maybe it thinks that there's going to be more wind there, or no, it wants. But it, but regardless, they're all pretty similar. The GFS wants us to go offshore a bit more, and obviously the GFS thinks there's more wind out there. Um, but let's remember that we're looking, what we're looking, visualizing here, what the, what the wind map that we're looking at here is 50 kilometer resolution. These uh, routes here, the, the yellow, the red, and the blue, they would have used, uh, the, the, ye the, the yellow would have used the, the 9K ECMWF. Um, so that's a higher resolution model. And then the PWG and the PWE would have used one kilometer or eight kilometer resolution modeling to, 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 to do this route. The GFS has used a 27 kilometer resolution. So maybe that's why these guys want us to go along the coast, is that they think that there'll be a better breeze along the coast with the high resolution modeling, uh, which is, I'd probably back that. Um, if I click on, one of these here, and it says five knots. So she's pretty light. Uh, we could also be motoring up there. Um, let's go back to the GFS. And yeah, I mean, that's why that route wants us to go out there. I think the other reason that it will want us to go out there is that the weather routing wants us to stay in the current. Um, we know that the current's gonna be running up the coast here. So the wind's going with it for all of our route. And, uh, but we can flick over and have a look at it because I downloaded that previously. This is the HICOM model that I've got selected there. And as you can see, the, you know, the Gulf Stream is ripping up there. Um, in this part of, part of the world, it's, a, it's pretty important. Well, very important, it's critical. And yeah, we could, have, we, could, we could get a much bigger area if we wanted to, depending on where we are, but as you can see, for this trip, we're, we're, we're in, in, the, in the Gulf Stream there, and we, this is you know, critical to our safety that we uh, understand that and, and use the tools to, to manage that, um, you know, this effect. I mean, if I click on that there, it's three knots of current. Uh, yeah, we have three, three different models there as well. We have the HICOM, the Mercator, and the RTOFS. So, yeah, and as you can see, that these routes, they go out of it here. So the, that GFS route, uh, obviously, that thought there was more wind out there, and also taking advantage of the, uh, of the current. So, yeah, right. Let's go back, I'll click over here, we'll go back to weather routing. So I can just have a look through here, and I can see that there's a little bit of rain, so that might prompt me to want to have a look at the Cape. And so what Cape is, is convective available potential energy. And I'm gonna zoom out a bit on that. And you can see here we, so we've got that rain and we've got, you know, reasonably high cape levels. I mean, if this was in uh, the part of the world that I live, you'd be freaking out because we never get high cape levels like, like this because of uh, how far south we are. But so I've got rain and I've got cape and the cape is an indicator, just a, you know, one tool that, that you know, that we, we could be looking at, um, you know, thunderstorm squally activity type thing. So. The reason I get this is it's giving me um, a heads up of, of, of that potential um, activity. So you see over here, that's, that's a low cape level, the purple, that's, we wouldn't be worried, but we've got, we've got rain and we've got cape. So two, two different things put together. I would, um, I might, this might mean that if I'm gonna be sailing up the coast and at night I might, I might, I might just sail with a reef in for the night. Just, I might have to sail more conservatively, um, have less sail up, just in case there is, you know, we get hit by some sort of uh, nasty squalls. 
um, also during the day if I, if I could see these high cape levels and I saw some you know dark clouds rolling towards me I would I would know that that's that's time to um, reduce sail before it hits me so yeah a really good um, indicator of what's going on so if I flick over to the ECMWF model there and yeah I would be uh, I would be um, definitely taking that into consideration uh, because the the you know if we get a, a thunderstorm rolling through we could we could end up we could go from five knots to 35 knots and so yeah this is this is a great a great indicator of 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 that happening you know the potential for that um we've got the gas map here uh not really um relevant for the route that we have here but definitely something that you should look at you when you're looking at, at your wind map, you're looking at averages. And sometimes a route, you might be like, oh, it's only 20 knots. And, but you flick over to the gas map and in the gas map, you've got, you know, 30, 35 knots. And that could make a big difference to your trip. You know, 20 knots is one thing, 35 knots is, you know, that, that makes a different, uh, a different tra a trip. Um, we can have a look at the wave. As you can see, we've got, you know, very little, uh, wave action to worry about but again looking at that direction if there was a big residual swell coming in and and coming in from this direction and running into the, our current that could make our trip pretty nasty so yeah essentially we've um yeah we covered off the the, the real basics there and but I, th I guess what i uh am trying to convey here we've got all these different things we've got all these the the you know we've got the the wind we've got the rain we've got the gust we've got the cape we've got the wave we need to look at all these things and learn how they all work together and understand what's going on because uh, you know what we have here with the weather routing and 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 the and the offshore app it's it's tools and so we're giving you the tools to use uh, but you need to use them and not blindly use them and what i mean by that is understand what the why the weather routing is telling you to do this or that um, and but also look at these other factors and put them together so that you're forming your own picture um, and you know understanding what's going on in the weather um, let's check my time so we'll just flick over to the GMDSS as you can see this covers a huge area um, it's it's written by a um, meteorologist at, at NOAA and you just need to work out uh, you know which which part of it's yeah, which part of um, the the coast you're at and and have a look and you can see here we've got you know all our uh, alerts and a, and a synopsis so as I say really worth really worth getting and really worth understanding and it might um you know we can see we've got the national hurricane center there and are they giving us any warnings yeah no warnings but yeah definitely worth getting all righty flip back over here so i think um i think that's pretty much what i want to cover off there I'll stop sharing I can come over here and um, yeah I think I'm not sure how the questions and answers have gone um, but yeah I'll, but just before I wrap up with that um, we do have Kieran um, has been sitting in on this uh, we have a, a really um, responsive support team we uh, if you I would hope that anyone that you ask would uh, really have positive things to say about the the support at Predict Wind. It's something we focus on a lot. If there's anything that you want to know, you should ask. We're really, really happy to help. Um, as I said, you know, Kieran's an experienced ocean ocean racer um, and sailor, and does and and does a lot of cruising, and so are all the other people on the support team. Um, 
I don't know how many uh, laps of the planet they have, but they're, they're all sailors and they understand what it's like to be out there. They um, are experienced and so they can really give you valuable advice. So definitely reach out to our support team with any questions you have. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty great. much it. Thanks, thanks for listening. Oh, thank you so much, Nick. That was phenomenal and Karen as well. Um, and we just appreciate your support for SSCA so much. Um, also, I should mention to anybody who's on the call, if you are a member of SSCA, you do get a 20% discount on, an, on your first uh, year of subscription for Predict Win. And to take advantage of that discount, you go and subscribe on their website and then contact customer support with your SSCA member number, um, and they will make that reduction for you. And as Nick said, they're super responsive. Uh, so you will have no problem taking advantage of that offer. Uh, this was really helpful. I know for me, I'm a Predict Win subscriber for several years now. And every time I think I know exactly what I'm doing, then I talk to Nick and I realize I'm just scratching the surface. So, so much available here. Thank you so much. Karen, thank you for taking the time to answer all the questions. Um, I don't know if, if Karen, if you, if you have anything you wanted to mention um, before we close out, I know you're muted, but anything that came up in the questions that was sort of re repetitive, I can unmute you or if you want, you can do yourself. Anything that came up that you thought you might want to highlight for anyone who might not have been reading the questions and answers? Um, not not really. I'm not going to start my camera because I'm not dressed for a webinar. <laughs> um, I think Nick did a great job of covering in general what we do at Predict Wind. Like he said, our support team's there to help. So I really encourage people to contact us. We'll direct you to articles. Um, we've, you know, we've been through this a lot. We know every problem that people have come across. So we think we can quickly help you. Don't struggle and get angry with the program. It's normally a setting or something that you just need to understand and once you do that um, it all becomes very clear I'm, I love it you know I'm a sailor and I just find it amazing how accurate it can be it's so cool and the more you use it the better it becomes so we like people to practice a lot before they head offshore and um, you'll really benefit from it yeah, that's great. Um, so so uh, Kirsten was asking if there's an opportunity to get a free trial for a week. And I think um, you have a number of membership plans available. Uh, and did you want to quickly just sort of recap what the different levels of membership are and what might be available? Because um, I think one of your membership levels is actually um, free. Am I wrong? Yeah, so we do have a, a free version. So you can sign up for free. And there's a, there's actually a lot in, in, in that. Um, and but also, um, if, if someone wants to have a go with it, by all means, contact, um, you know, contact Karen or, 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 the, or the rest of the support team, and they'll definitely, there's no, no problem to upgrade your account so you can play around with all this stuff and, and, and have a go. Um, yeah, no problem at all. That's, you know, we would love people to do that. Because it's, once, once you use it, once you start understanding that you've got this uh, really powerful tool there, um, you, you'll, then you'll sort of, understand the the beauty of it so um yeah get in there i mean we really just scratched the surface today um i've used this product since it was um you know since it was launched five six years ago and and it's we're, we're constantly working on it making it better listening to the customers so um yeah it's it's it's, it's great stuff that's fantastic. All right. Well, so we'll wrap there. We are going to be posting this video um, online and I'm sure and I hope very much that we'll hear from Nick and Karen again. Uh, and again, we super appreciate your support and thank you so much everyone for joining today. Thank you very much. Take care. Stay safe, everyone. Bye everyone. Bye Nick. Bye Karen. Thank you. Bye.